Love is Blind is a weird show in itself but I can't help but wonder about a few stranger things I have spotted while watching the show. Number 1. No one is ugly. The experiment was done for our entertainment but also to test if love is actually blind. And how much does one's physical attraction have to do with it? However, every person on the show is conventionally attractive. So even though they may not choose the person based on their usual type, the person that steps out behind that door is no beast by any measure. If the show really wanted to test the theory, they should have had some people who didn't fit the conventional mold of being attractive in the mix like the TLC show Too Ugly for Love. Which is a horrible name for a show but we get it. Number 2. The fights seem staged. Some of the fights between the couples seem extremely fake, especially between Giannina and Damien. The two started out very lovey-dovey. Then out of nowhere, we see them having really dumb heated arguments. Their fights didn't seem authentic at all, like when Giannina called Damien out for having an awkward conversation at Barnett's birthday party. Or when she randomly decided to insult his skills in the bedroom. I don't think they are actors but there was something fishy going on behind the scenes. Giannina, however seemed like she took a couple of acting classes, she literally looked like she was doing a monologue most of the show. Number 3. No one has revealed their relationship status until the finale. The show was filmed way back in 2018. How on earth did they keep their relationship status a secret all this time? So did everyone in their life including co-workers, acquaintances, even the bosses have to sign an NDA. I mean a year is a long time to keep your husband or wife a dirty little secret. And what about the couples that didn't end up getting married? Which were most of them by the way? Were they not allowed to date other people? Number 4. They had to walk down the aisle. If you knew there was no way in hell you were gonna say yes, then why would you waste all that time and money just to humiliate someone? Instead, they could simply meet together one last time at the end and decide if they then want to continue dating or start planning a wedding or cancel the proposal. Of course, the show wouldn't be as dramatic or ridiculous, so we get it. But still Number strange. Number 5. Getting all dolled up. We get that they were being filmed for a Netflix show, but if the whole premise of the show was that love is, or could be blind then show us people that look a bit rough around the edges. However I will give credit to Barnett, that guy looked like he literally jumped straight out of his bed into the pods and still had women losing their minds over him. Number 6. Everybody was from Atlanta. It makes sense because it would be too much to ask people to consider marrying someone they just met and having to decide who would up and leave their entire lives and move to another state. But since when did semantics play any role in this show? I wonder if anyone crossed paths maybe at a bar or gym. I personally think Cameron was stalking Lauren. He fell so madly in love within five days. Call me a pessimist, but that just seems impossible. I will say though, that they do seem to be genuinely in love. Number 7. They are planning a maybe wedding. On the show they make it seem as though the couples are planning their actual weddings. Amber even brings up the costs of planning a wedding. I think it's safe to say that generic wedding venue was a one-for-all type of situation. Getting your parents and everyone that is closest to you attend a wedding that most probably will end in a, I don't. Number 8. What's with those damn copper glasses? This show is called Love is Blind and not Game of Thrones. So what's with the copper goblets? They literally had those glasses everywhere. Those glasses had more show than some of the participants. The woman even had it at their raunchy bachelorette party and the men had it at their very lame bachelor party. Were they so drunk that they broke all the glassware and had to be given stainless steelware? Number 9. Vague job titles. We had a scientist, a business owner, a general manager, a regional manager, and a few other managers. Everyone's job title seems so vague as though they were a bunch of unemployed actors that pulled out a card that allocated them a character and job title. For example, Jessica. Loves wine. Hates Mark, regional manager. Or Amber. Tomboy with makeup debt. Absolutely crazy about Barnett. Number 10. What's the deal with Rory? Good old Rory was supposedly a contestant on the show but we never saw him on any dates in the pods. The only time we actually saw him was when he was dishing out Dr. Phil type of advice to the disheveled men. I got a feeling his job title was not a brand manager but a therapist. Number 11. The alcohol was flowing. They are trying to find love in Atlanta and, not spend the summer on the Jersey Shore. I understand that alcohol and reality TV go hand in hand, and dating shows are generally no exception. 
but my gosh, these people could not even talk properly let alone choose a partner for life, and when I say these people, I mostly mean Jessica. Even the damn dog drank wine. In the rapping. This show was an absolute cringe fest. And I cannot wait for season two.